So thank you everybody for attending the web, this webinar on heat pumps. This is intended to be a follow-up of the one we did in April. It'll be shorter. Uh, we're gonna ask you to hold your questions to the end. Um, we're, we're aiming for 20 to 25 minutes here. Um, we're gonna focus here less on specifics of heat pumps. Um, and we're going to focus more on developments that have happened since April. In particular, the, the increases in fossil fuel prices that have happened since then compared to electricity, the IRA incentives that have, uh, are coming next year, and also a mechanism that uh, we're going to start in Haverford Township to provide advice to people interested in transitioning from fossil fuel to heat pumps. And this is gonna be presented by me, I'm Steve Clark. Um, Sam, you'll, get, you'll meet later. And Hank is uh, as a member of the EAC. He's not gonna speak here, but we're, he's also participating in this. Um, I don't know if Hank is on, but welcome everybody. I'm gonna start here. So absolute basics, what is a heat pump? I'm going to use an analogy for water. Sometimes people think heat pumps are very abstract, but if you think of it in this way, water always moves from higher to lower. However, if you want it to go backwards from low to high, you need to put energy in through a pump. And um, it's really no different with heat. Heat always moves from warm to cold. There's no such thing as cold. There's only lack of heat in physics. Um, a heat pump re reverses the direction. So heat pump can move heat, which is in something that's cold to something that's warmer. And we all know refrigerators and air conditioners, they're essentially one-way heat pumps. Both of them move um, heat from your cool inside of your house or fridge to the warmer outside. But heat pumps for houses can go both ways. So they can do air conditioning and cooling. That's really all it is there. And as it gets um, hotter outside um, in the summer, it's harder and harder for your air conditioner to do its job. It takes more energy. And conversely, it's the same thing for a heat pump. As it gets colder outside, it gets much harder to pump. Essentially, you're, you're, you're raising the hill that the, the heat has to be pumped up. So a lot of people um, over the last few years have been concerned that your heat pump can it supply enough heat when it's really cold outside? And this is something here that um, we want to get clear to everybody that emphatic, yes, heat pumps are, are uh, the technology has advanced so much recently uh, that um, heat pumps are being adopted all across very cold climates. I work for an incentive, uh, utility programs all across New York State where it gets down to negative 15. And um, the reason why we have confidence that heat pumps can do this is because we have this resource here, Northeast Energy Efficiency Partnership. So I'll have a link of references for you, but this is a database, database of cold climate rated heat pumps. And um, this was in April, right now there's 38,000 models listed. But to be listed, it has, the heat pump has to be at least 175% efficient at five degrees, which is pretty darn impressive. Um, and the new Energy Star standards coming out are increasing that further. And, and this, this database is actually rating heat pumps down to like negative 15, a lot of models are doing that. This is all done under standard conditions. So you can trust the, if you see a product that is rated here, I'm gonna just show you here. This is actually Sam's, um, one of his heat pumps, which he'll get into later, uh, the listing for it. So it's a Mitsubishi, it's a ductless unit and we'll get into what this means. But the real important thing here, these are the technical ratings. So it shows you how much heat it can put out as it gets colder here. It rates it at 47, 17, and five. And it's the efficiency as well. So it has an efficiency range because it could be at high power or low power. But you can see uh, when it's reasonably cold, it's, it's you know about 300 to 400% efficient. And as you get down to 
um, five degrees, you're between 150 and 200% uh, efficient for this model. One thing about heat pumps, as you get colder, the, the power that it puts out drops. So that's one reason, one difference between heat pumps and fossil fuel. Your furnace will always run at 80% efficiency at any temperature and it'll give the same power. So it makes, it makes heat pumps a little more complicated and we hope to de demystify this here, but that is something that people should be aware of. I'm gonna go in here, um, just some types of heat pumps. Um, the most common, there's, there's heat pumps that either pump air, uh, heat from air in the outside to air in the inside. These are called air source heat pumps. And if you have a ducted system, here's a house with ducts under the floor, and this is where the furnace would be. Uh, typically, you can have an air source heat pump um, on the outside. And actually, if you um, look at the first slide here, um, this is a new heat pump being put in. This is, an, this is my, my neighbor, actually. This is an air conditioner condenser. And so if you have a house with one of these, it, it, this is the cooling part of your uh, heating of your HVAC system. You can replace this with a very similar looking um, heat pump. It, it won't necessarily look like this. It could look like this. It essentially does both heating and cooling. Um, so that's if you have ducts. If you don't have ducts, you can do ductless. These are what uh, we see a lot, the mini splits. So there are these cassettes that go on walls. This is in the case where maybe you have a radiator system and you don't have ducts. Um, some points here, this is all NYSERDA, um, New York State uh, literature here. But it's, it's important to make sure your house is as tight as possible, that you have the insulation as well done as you can, because that's the cheapest uh, way forward. Um, if you put heat pumps in a very leaky house, it's gonna be very expensive for the heat pumps and it's gonna be very expensive for the electricity. Um, another type is ground source heat pumps. In this case, Heat is brought uh, from the ground through these loops that they're typically about five or six feet uh, beneath the ground. Uh, so there's water uh, with an antifreeze moving through here that um, either moves heat from the ground to ultimately to the air or the other way around. And this is nice because there's no uh, units outside. It's also quite a bit more expensive. Um, but it's certainly very popular. Um, this is a new slide here. Um, so since the Ukraine war happened um, in the spring, I think we all know that the energy landscape of the whole world has changed. Um, this is a, um, a government resource tracking um, prices of natural gas over since, uh, what is this? 20 years, more than 20 years. So what's interesting is um, in, in you know, 10, 15 years ago, natural gas was pretty expensive and pretty volatile. And then we had fracking come in and we had this period where gas was really cheap and uh, very hard for uh, heat pumps to beat in terms of costs. But what's interesting or troubling, however you look at it, is the natural gas prices are shooting up again. Um, this is data from New York State, but the, the prices are pretty similar here for heating oil, uh, propane. I don't think people use uh, kerosene, but you see the same thing. Um, this recent spike here over this last uh, over the last summer. It's, it certainly has come down. This is kind of follows gas prices, but it's very much higher, you know, in the $5 range where before it was two, $3. Um, so more than uh, two and a half times more expensive. It's hard to speculate where energy prices will go, but I think we're all aware that particularly if Russia shuts off uh, gas to Europe and uh, America continues to do natural liquid natural gas 
this is um, it's a good bet that this will stay high or continue high higher. Um, these are Pika residential prices. I just pulled these yesterday. Um, so the supply cost, so your gas and electricity has a supply and a delivery cost. Delivery is pretty constant. Um, if you look at natural gas, it has more than doubled um, that we're you're paying Pico. And if you add these two together, it's increased by 31%. Electricity is also going up, but not as fast. Um, and electricity has over the last year has risen 13%. Um, so we can say if, if you have any of these fuels in your house now, electric resistance, particularly heating oil or propane, you will be immediately cash flow positive. In, in other words, you're going to be saving money from day one if you go to a heat pump. If you switch to, uh, from natural gas to heat pumps, right now, depending on your installation, it could be slightly positive, slightly negative. But back um, in the beginning of the year, it was cheaper before we had this increase. It was definitely cheaper to stay with natural gas. That's changing. Um, I will go now, Sam, I will pass it to you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it, it's a pleasure to get to do this again. Uh, and I'll keep mine short and sweet. Um, uh, I live uh, in the Lanark section of Havertown, uh, just between uh, Route 1 and Route 3, and I have a small twin house uh, with my wife, and about three years ago, I decided to undertake a complete electrification of my house, which included the installation of heat pumps. So uh, uh, you can go on to the next slide. Uh, just so you understand, uh, my motivation is uh, twofold. I wanted to uh, make a difference in my own ec uh, economics of my house and my utilities. Um, I couldn't see uh, a time when I could see a time when natural gas was going to get more expensive. Um, and I, I saw in my personal experience as a union sheet metal worker that heat pumps were becoming much more popular. Uh, especially in commercial buildings. And it was starting to spread to residential settings as well. And I also had a tolerant wife. Um, she has her hobbies. I have mine. Um, we, we all have our interests. And mine was uh, completely retrofitting my house. So you can go on to the next slide. Uh, here's my house. Uh, it's nothing special. Uh, typically, when people think about that environmentally friendly house, they think of that crazy thing that's on House Hunters or some other uh, show where this is completely unattainable and doesn't make any sense to me. I could never have this happen. Well, you drive by my house every day, you'd never think there was anything special about it, except for the really crazy garden. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, the first thing we did is we installed a solar array. And uh, we installed this on my garage in the back, mainly because uh, not for any particular interest, but uh, we have a big tree next to our house. So we had a trench out to our garage, put in a 3.6 megawatt uh, kilowatt array uh, on my garage, and that feeds into our man, main panel back in the house. And currently, I'll tell you how much that supplies in terms of my actual usage, but right now, um, it's just... Uh, an important uh, aspect of my entire retrofit that it's important to note that the reason why you're putting in heat pumps is not necessarily to use the electric that comes from Pico. The ultimate goal for uh, the environmental movement when using heat pumps is to get it from an environmentally friendly source. Um, Pico, yes, it may be greening the, uh, greening the electrical grid slowly, imperceptibly over time, but I did my part by greening my house with my own power, and which with the current new incentives that are gonna be coming in with the, the IRA uh, that was just uh, signed into law, we're gonna have that 30% uh, benefit um, back on the tax books. So it's in your best interest when you're doing heat pumps to also consider a solar array. Uh, next slide. So uh, part of my 
uh, retrofit was uh, upgrading my electrical panel. I originally had a 100 uh, amp service. I upgraded my service to 200 amps. I did this all by myself, uh, except for the connection to the street. Um, it's, it's, for me, it was easy. I do this on a regular basis at work. I hang out with electricians. I hang out with people with all the different trades and construction. So it becomes second nature for the average person. You're going to have to hire a contractor. <laughs> so it's just the way it is. But it's, this was part of my retrofit. Uh, the disconnect for the solar array and the disconnect for my garage sub panel is there as well. But otherwise, that's your standard 200 amp service. Uh, next slide. So here are the heat pumps that I use. Um, you'll see these on the side of my house. I installed these myself. It's part of what I do. Um, on a commercial level, I install ductwork. I also install heat pumps. I install units uh, that use fossil fuels, which I loathe. I, I think they are dead weight and should go the way of the dodo. Um, it's just the trend and um, these are the future. And I can tell you from personal experience that these work. Uh, Steve can also tell you from personal experience from all the people that he refers to for heat load calculations for his program that he does in New York, that these work. Um, the one on the left, the picture on the left is the indoor unit that I have for my first floor. It's an open concept first floor. So I can see straight down through the house. So I just needed this one unit to deal with the heating and cooling for my first floor. But I have the same type of cassette uh, in my basement. The third floor, uh, the second floor I mean is multiple rooms. So I had a ducted out to each one of the individual rooms and that is a ducted mini split. Uh, so it's a unit that has the connection for duct work and I ran the duct to each one of the individual rooms in order to do the heating and cooling appropriately. I do have to say also, in addition to what I did with these heat pumps, I sealed the house as much as I could and did as much replacement of windows, of any type of air leaks, um, anything and everything that I could have done. That's beyond the scope of this talk. If you wanna to talk to me about that individually, that's fine. But the size of the unit that I selected was based on the amount of ceiling that I did, uh, the orientation of the house, which I might add is north facing, not south facing. So I wasn't able to get any solar gain from the direction of the house. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I wasn't able to benefit from the use of a heat pump uh, on each one of the floors of my house. Uh, next slide. Uh, and I guess with that, I'm <laughs> done with my section of the presentation. Um, if I have to add anything, this is doable. It's something that the average person can do in their average everyday house. And uh, I thank, I thank uh, uh, everybody that made this possible. And I will be free to answer anybody's questions at the end of the presentation. A, a mute. Okay, thank you, Sam. I'm gonna. Um, I have two more slides here on um, the IRA. This is a resource that just came out yesterday. Um, you should bookmark this site. I'm gonna go to it. It's called um, WhiteHouse.gov Clean Energy. And let me just see. Uh, okay, let me just go to that site. Okay, so, so this is that site here. I mean, the, 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 um, I, this will be posted on the resources site. Again, this just came out yesterday. This is a guide for normal people um, who are not, not, you know, engineers or utility people who are interested in maximizing their IRA incentives to electrify their house. It's a great resource. Let me just go through here. First of all, you can sign up to receive updates on this. This is a cool little um, uh, tool here. So you can see, you can click on different things. This is a uh, solar, 
a, a little blurb on that. There's more detail below. This is on incentives for insulation and air sealing. Like Sam was saying, there's money available for tightening your house in the IRA. There's um, um, down here, um, heat pump water heaters have incentives, uh, pretty generous incentives to switch your hot water heater. EVs, um, this is um, the heat pump incentive here. Um, down here is more detail. Um, if you're inter in, interested in solar, this is right now, the law goes into effect in 2023. So you can uh, look in here to learn more details. This is really the heat pump section here. Um, so there's, there's um, it's too, probably too small for, for people to read here. But um, this will be in the resources. It's a great, uh, it's a great tool, um, especially with this little <coughs> graphic. You can, we can all aspire to be like Sam. And um, Sam even has a heat pump uh, clothes dryer. There's incentives for that. There's incentive for um, induction ranges. Um, it's, it's, pre it's a pretty nice resource. Um, let me go back here. Um, now I'm going to go to um, something we just um, talked about with the Haverford EAC is it's a way to advise people who are interested in this transition. And this is kind of like, um, I don't know if people are familiar with the Penn State extension, where they advise people um, on, on a lot of agriculture or gardening, and I think they used to have, or maybe they still have something for energy efficiency, but the idea we're trying out here is, is very similar. Um, first of all, the incentives and the market maturity of heat pumps and the accelerating climate crisis are likely to drive a, a pretty strong uptick in interest in heat pumps near term. And I think by the turnout here, I think that's, that's probably true. Um, the process, let's be clear though, is significantly more complex than a conventional, uh, you know, replace your furnace or your condenser. Um, there's a lot of variables in there. It can be very confusing to homeowners. Um, what we'd like to do is provide free contractor agnostic advice through the Friends of Haverford EAC. And the idea here is there's, there's a general uh, Gmail address that the, this group uses for a lot of things related to energy to promote electrification in our community. Uh, the people that monitor this would funnel to local experts and that would be Sam, me and, and Hank and other people who wanna participate who have knowledge uh, specific uh, experience here. So we would work with the homeowner um, what, what are some questions that you would need to ask when you're generating quotes? Um, this is new territory for almost everybody. How do you ensure a quality in installation? There's some specifics and Sam has a lot of uh, great input here because he's done it. Um, how, how can I be sure my, my climate will work when it's really cold? I want to minimize or eliminate fossil fuel. How do I know that? And Hopefully you guys in, in your mind, you would think right away, look at the NEEP list. Is it on the NEEP list? Is it certified as a cold climate heat pump? Can I see the certificate? That's a lot of people in, in the uh, community might not be aware of that. Understanding the IR, IR incentives. Um, the homeowner could contact as many contractors as they want for quotes. That's really up to them. And, and then we can work with them just to review and, and have follow-up uh, uh, questions that, with the owner. Uh, we've already done this with um, a couple people informally and um, advised them against buying the cheapest piece of, um, cheapest heat pump that a contractor would, uh, would offer, like a single speed heat pump that you wouldn't really have confidence that would work through a lot of the winter. Um, and um, so there, there's um, this anyway, we're piloting this in Hover Township, but I think it is a model that other communities could use. Um, we'd also like to hold host educational webinars 
and home tour tours. I think we'd like to volunteer Sam for a home tour. <laughs> and um, you know, with manufacturers uh, uh, possibly talking, there's a lot of innovation. So a lot of really cool products coming out really fast um, that uh, people may want to know. So we we may have we may have this you know a couple of these a year um, just to promote education and hopefully demystify this process. Finally, I have, um, here's some references. Um, this can, you know, we can share this uh, slide pack. This is an excellent article that a couple months ago in uh, the New York Times and Wirecutter on a lot of basics uh, for heat pumps. It also has a section in there of the major manufacturers of cold climate heat pumps. And then you can type in your zip code and it'll give you the, the, the contract, local contractors that install, say, Mitsubishi, LG, Daikin, all, all the, 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 the really top brands. Um, New York Clean Heat has a lot of great resources. This is a link to the database, the NEEP uh, uh, database. And here's all the references for uh, fuel prices. Um, this is that link uh, for the IRA. Um, all the information on the IRA. And finally, here is the uh, email if anybody wants to, um, is, 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 is considering this switch from fossil fuel to heat pumps. And this can be uh, something you're thinking about in a year. You should probably think about this if your system is getting old, any of your fossil fuel systems, especially if they're like around 15 years old, they're kind of near the end of their life. You should start thinking about this and claim your incentives and, and, and make the transition before it breaks in the middle of the night of winter. Um, that's all. And uh, we could stop the recording now and take some questions. <laughs>